Now in the previous tutorial about switches, we fixed Bob and Joe's problem by making it so Joe turns on a switch, then Bob reacts to whether that switch is on and off. But there is a couple problems with this scenario. The first problem is, if we talk to Bob once, he's going to say he gave us permission, he's going to move to the left. But what if the player is a bad little player and they're going to go talk to Bob again? He's going to say he gave you permission to move more to the left. We can just keep making him move more and more to the left by keeping repeating the event by talking to him. And that's a bad thing. And not only that, if we go into the house and we go back outside of the house, we know that, hey, Bob's back where he started and now we're standing on top of him. Uh, you can make that game design if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. And how are we going to fix these issues? And the answer is variables. Variables isn't the answer, but I mean, we're going to use it anyway to show how they work in this tutorial. So like I may have mentioned in the previous tutorial, variables are like switches, but they're set to numbers instead of being set to simply on and off. And so instead of explaining it, let's get straight into it. Let's delete this switch and instead replace it with a variable. So we'll go to control variables under control switches. We'll go create a new variable. We'll set it so it's variable ID one. We'll call it my variable. There we go. We'll hit okay. And we'll set my variable. We'll set it right here to set operation to one. If you may have noticed, there's a whole ton of other stuff like add, subtract, multiply, divide, mod, variable, random, game data, script, all this crazy stuff. Don't worry about it. We're just going to set it to a constant of one and then hit continue. And now what's going to happen is when this event is run and it gets to this point, our variable ID one called my variable is going to be set equal to one, which means we can now go into our Bob and have Bob react to whether the variable is set to one or set to zero, which is the default. Now, if we go in here, we can set it so our conditional branch will edit it. And instead of checking for my switch to be on, we'll check if our variable is equal to one. It's that simple. My variable is equal to constant of one. Let's hit OK. Now what's going to happen is, if variable is equal to 1, we're going to get permission and he's going to move to the left. Otherwise, he's going to say the default dialog, which is, he's Bob, and we can't pass until Joe says so. And that's cool and all, but it doesn't resolve the issue, which is, how do we make it so that this only repeats once, and then it does something else from that point on? And the answer is, we're actually going to get rid of this else branch. So let's remove these two events right here. So copy, paste, whatever, go into this event, and remove the else branch. So now what's going to happen is, if variable 1 is turned on, then it's going to do this stuff. Otherwise, it's just going to skip all this and do this stuff, whatever, you get it. So to address the problem, we're going to go in here, we're going to go to another conditional branch, and we're going to check if my variable is equal to 0, which is a default. So if my variable is equal to 0, we're going to do the default dialog right in here. So boop, 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 if variable is equal to 0, we'll put it on top right here. Right now I'm doing Control x to cut and Control v to paste. It's that simple, just don't worry about it. So. If my variable is equal to zero, it's going to do the default dialog. If my variable is equal to one, it's going to do the new dialog. But now we're going to do something else. Go back and make a third conditional branch. If my variable is equal to two, then he's going to say, please enter the house. And so when is variable two going to be turned on? It's going to be inside the code for variable one. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, control variables, set my variable, set it to two. So now, it's going to play this once, it's going to say Joe gave you permission, move this event to the left, then set the variable to 2. Then it's going to say please enter the house. And then since variable 2 is still going to be 2 no matter what, it's going to repeatedly say please enter the house every time you interact with him. So let's go up to Bob, he's going to say, hello my name is Bob, you cannot pass. We're going to go up to Joe, we're going to ask for permission, Joe's going to turn variable 1 to, w to 1, and then he's going to be like you can now pass. Go back to Joe. Variable 1 is going to be turned on, so he's going to say, you can now have permission, and he'll move to the left. Please enter the house. And now, when we go talk to him again, variable 1 will be still equal to 2, so he's going to continuously say, please enter the house, no matter what we do. So I guess let's just do what he says and go into the house. Except, yep, remember the second error, which is, oh boy, he's on top of us now, how are we going to fix this? And the answer is, we're going to go back into our room right here, go to this exit event right here, and double click on it. Now by default, transfer events are created automatically, but you can manipulate them if you wish. I want you to go to the very top of this event, double click on the first one so we can create a new event, control variables, set my variable ID 1, set it to constant of 3. So now my variable, which is going to be variable ID 1, is going to be set to 3. It's going to be placed on the very top, which means when the player tries to exit this house, variable 1 is going to be set to 3. Now, when variable 1 is set to 3, we can go into Bob, we can create a new event page, make so when variable my variable, which is variable ID 1, is greater than 3, or equal to 3, then he's going to be using this blank event which doesn't affect us. So I think finally, we can now say that our Joe and Bob situation is resolved. Let's go test it out. So Bob's going once again say, hello, my name is Bob, you cannot pass. 
we're gonna go talk to Joe. Joe's gonna turn variable one to one and by saying, hello, I'm Joe, you may not pass. Now, since variable one is gonna be set to one, Bob is going to give us permission to pass, and then he's going to set variable 1 to 2, and then say, please enter the house. We're going to talk to him again, but he's going to continue to say, please enter the house, since variable 1 is set to 2. Now we're going to enter the house, and when we attempt to leave the house, variable 1 is going to be set to 3 by interacting with this event right here. And now that variable 1 is set to 3, Bob has disappeared because variable 1 is now 3, and that triggers his disappearance or just lack of an event event that appears when variable 3 is 1 is, yeah, uh, yeah. You get the point. Did you like this tutorial? I'm sure you did. Now, for the most part, that's how variables work. They're gonna get complex, yes. But by using them, you're gonna create stuff like this, which is a dynamic, cutscene, or world interactive events, which will manipulate throughout your actions, events, whatever, you got it, okay, cool. Yeah, um, we'll get into more of this later. I'm just gonna move back and forth, say hi to Joe. Where did Bob go, Joe? Where did he go?